today we are looking at scatter plots. Scatter plots are a collection of linear functions given a series of data points. So in this case, our scatter plot is going to come from a series of data. And what we're going to do today is learn how to plug in those data series in the graphing calculator. So a lot of what we're going to do is going to come from the graphing calculator. So the slope to the first three problems on your page are as follows. Negative 17 over 36, negative 7 thirds, and negative 1 over 10. For number three, what I would do is put a parenthesis. Then you would hit math, and you could either get it to a fraction or decimal, or you can hit second. Oops, just kidding. Alpha, not second. Eh. I never use this because I always teach the academic kids. It's alpha y equals, and it will put the fraction bar on your calculator. So then you can do two-fifths minus alpha y equals fraction bar on your calculator. Alpha is the green button. The arrows. So alpha y equals, we'll put the fraction on there, and then the arrows allow you to move around on your screen. Close your parentheses, divided by parenthesis negative one minus zero. And then if you hit math, enter, enter, it'll keep it as a fraction. Yes. So like if you wanted 7.3 to be a fraction, you'd type 7.3 in, and then math, enter, enter, he's right, and it will turn it to a fraction. However, for the case of this problem, what you could do in number one is do 7.3 minus nine, close parenthesis, divided by 3.4 minus negative 0.2, And then if it gives you it as a decimal, now you can hit math, enter, enter, and you get that negative 17 over 36. So you can, I'll get to you guys, you could start it as decimals and convert it to a fraction as your final answer as well. Alex. Make sure you don't take Keegan's because it's up there charging and dead. Yes. On your screen. Yeah. Let me see if you're in the old math font. Yes. Yes. All right, yes. So a scatter plot is a set of bivariate data. Below it, I give you the definition of bivariate because some of us may not know it. Bivariate data is data that has two variables. So if you are in the computer science world, they use bivariate data in terms of coding. So if you think about like the matrixy movies or the movies where they have like the black screens with the green numbers, it's always zeros and one. That is a bivariate set of data. 
So it is bi because it stands for two, just like bicycle has two wheels. Binomial has two parts. The prefix bi stands for two. A scatter plot is a comparison of two things. We're going to have two types of scatter plots. We're going to do scatter plots by hand and scatter plots on the calculator. So we're going to do scatter plots by hand and on the calculator. All right. Data is described in one of five ways. Data is either weak or strong, positive or negative, or no correlation whatsoever. Our calculator, our calculator will tell us whether data is strong and positive, strong and negative, or has no correlation depending on where it lies from negative one to one. So data with no correlation will have a zero R value on the calculator. Extremely strongly correlated data will either be very close to one or negative one, depending on if the slope is positive or negative. So yes, those of you in stats, this is semi-near stats, like, what? Well, Yes, except for we're using ours to make prediction equations, where in stats you're using it to look for data correlation and no. Please excuse this interruption. For all students who are in the math base that are going to the math base for the competition today, please report to the lobby. Thank you. <laughs> An art expert is visiting a gallery. An art expert is visiting a gallery and jots down the guesses for five different paintings. So the data in this table can be used to look at or examine the art gallery experts data. So, plot those points. We're going to plot the point 12, where 12 is our guess and 11 is the actual. So, we will plot the point 12, 11. We will plot the point 7, 8.5. Ten, twelve, five, three point eight, and then nine, ten. So overall, looking at that set of data, we can look at that scatter plot and decide that it is definitely going to have a positive relationship. And that the relationship is probably strong. 
because for the most part, the points are relatively close to what we call a line of best fit or a trend line. So the line I drew in green is a trend line or a line of best fit. I could draw that line several times and it may come out with a slightly different equation each time. So if you draw in your own trend line, it may not perfectly match my trend line. So some people draw them high, some might draw them lower. It's all gonna be pretty close, but never the same. So that's why a statistician or mathematician eventually came up with a way to calculate it on the calculator. When drawing it in, you want to try to draw it in so that the same number of points above and below are on the line. So it's hard for me because like the tablet's a little off, but is everybody okay with kind of the understanding that goes behind it? The trend line can then be created to get an equation for the line. When doing that, you need to pick points on your trend line, not on the graph. So from my trend line, I might say that this perfectly went through 8-8. Eight, eight. as well as two, three. And then my slope is eight minus three over eight minus two, which is five, six. So what that means is that my guess and my actual were pretty close, but that if I guessed the actual to be, if the actual is 5,000, my guess was 6,000. So I kind of guessed the art to be a little higher than what it was. The y-intercept appears to be right here at one. So my equation would be y equals five, six x plus one. You could also plug into point slope form and work your magic that way as well. Let's look at example number two. It says, given the table of values, show that the percent of US households with at least one personal computer matches, make a scatter plot and a line of best fit. And then we are also going to use that data on the calculator. What are you doing? What? Ah. All right, so when drawing a graph, you need to make sure that you label all parts. So we need to make sure we label the Y and the X axis. So the X axis is years, the Y axis is percent. If you don't start at zero, you put a squiggle. That indicates that you're not starting at the origin. And then I need to go from 2010 to 1984. So that's a 26-year span. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I have 10 blocks and I need a 26-year span, I'm going to go by threes or fours starting with my initial point. 
So this is 1984. Add 3 to that because 26 divided by 10 is 2.6. So going by 3s will get me what I need. That's 87. Add 3 to 87 and you get 1990. Then 93, 96, 99. And then just to indicate that you went into the 2000s, you'd rate 2002, then 05, 08, and 2011. And for percents, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 blocks for percents. And we need to get to about 80. So you could go by fives because 15 times five is going to get you 75. So you're going to be just shy of your 76. And then you'll plot your points. So when graphing from a blank table, you have to make sure you label everything. So in 84, it's at 8.4. In 89, it's at 15. In 93, 22.8. In 97, at 36.6. In 97, or in 2001, 56.3, 2003, 61.8, and by 2010, 76.7. So once again, if I looked at this data, I would say it has a relatively positive relationship. Most of those points are pretty close to my line. So it has a strong positive relationship. So that describes the correlation of the data. And then you just want to pick points on your graph. So I could pick 1990 and say that that's like 18. I could pick maybe 1999 and say that that's perfectly in between 40 and 45. So maybe I'd say 43. Find my slope. And we get that that simplifies to 25 ninths. And then it would be y minus 18 equals 25 ninths x minus 1990. And then simplifying, you get 25 ninths x times negative 1990 plus 18. And it should make sense that my y-intercept is such an awkward negative number because it's coming from the negatives when computer households didn't exist. So honestly, this is the case where leaving an equation in point-slope form is much more useful.
because if I asked you what the percent was in 2021, you could just plug in here and you would say X minus 18 equals 25 ninths 2021 minus 1990. And we would get that y is equal to 104%. And what that means is that the percent of households in the U.S. with at least one computer is at 104%. So again, after a certain point, data kind of hits a standstill. But again, that is just a way of showing a correlation. Good. Everything you're going to do in your homework tonight is by hand. So you're just doing the next four problems. I kind of gave you the graphs. Make sure you label them and find your equation by finding your slope. You can leave your slope. You can use your equations in point slope form. Yes. Yes. 